Welcome to Architecture 4001. First, let's give credit where credit is due. A big thanks goes to John Butterworth, who developed the original version of this class back when he was on my team at MITRE. So this was licensed as Creative Commons with attribution and share alike. And so the original share alike clause said that this class is derived from John Butterworth and Xenokova's advanced Intel x86 BIOS and SMM class posted at blah, 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 opensecuritytraining.info introbios.html. So again, big thanks to John for making the original class, which I've modified quite a bit since then. So back in Architecture 2001, we saw this diagram from the AMD manuals, which talked about the different processor execution modes. And so while we learned about things like protected mode, compatibility mode, and 64-bit mode, full long mode, in Architecture 2001, in this class, we're going to learn about things like real mode, which is where the firmware starts executing from when the processor is reset. We're also going to learn about system management mode, which is a thing where code is put into a special isolated region and executed when the system needs to do things like power management. It's generally set up by firmware and then is left to run autonomously in the background, secretly in a place that you can't really see. So what are the course goals for this class? Well, we want to teach you how to understand where the firmware is stored, how it's read and written by the processor, and how it's write protected so that malware can't introduce malicious software into the deepest part of the firmware. We're also gonna learn about system management mode, how it's isolated, why we generally say that SMM is the most powerful and privileged code on the system, and why that won't necessarily always be the case. We'll also learn about how SMM is protected to, again, stop malware from injecting itself into there. Now, some other course goals is that we want you to understand how to inspect the configuration of your own system so that you can understand whether the vendor has properly locked it down. Because the reality is that there's no reason to actually go out and find memory corruption, exploitable vulnerabilities if the vendor has just went ahead and left the thing completely unlocked. Now, hopefully you won't see that as much anymore, certainly not on enterprise grade systems, but you will find that if you're running some lesser system from a company that doesn't really care about security, then you almost certainly will find that the system is unlocked. And sometimes they think of that as a feature, I think of it as a bug. Another goal of this class is to prepare you for future classes on things like reverse engineering and exploits. And as always, we want to teach you how to read the phone manual so that you can go beyond what you've learned in this class because it's going to be necessary to read a whole bunch of stuff beyond what you learn in this class. We're also going to provide you with an introduction to firmware in a mostly firmware agnostic way. So the information you learn in this class is going to be relevant to something like UEFI or Core Boot or Legacy BIOS. And just like with things like x86 assembly, this is again, even lesser known information and therefore this knowledge is power. And remember kids, knowledge is power, which you can wrest from me because the accumulation of power is a game, a game of which Thanos has yet to tire. And this is why I love the Marvel Cinematic Universe because if I used this deep cut from some random comic book, there's absolutely no way anyone except the super nerds would have understood me back in the day but now you know exactly what I'm talking about. And to the point that this is rare and valuable knowledge, I found this random screenshot while I was looking for something else from a previous Intel presentation. And I think this nicely summarizes the typical inverted pyramid that is associated with low level knowledge. So lots of people know things up at the high layers, but down at the lowest layers, not that many people know it. And so by taking this class, you're acquiring a rarefied resource of knowledge that will ultimately be valuable. So let's talk about the outline for this class. So we wanna learn a lot of different stuff, and here it is, but specifically we're going to start here covering things like the reset vector, protected mode, real mode, you know, the processor execution modes. And where we want to get from there is down to here to the flash write protection and the attacks that could potentially bypass the write protection. But to understand that, you need to understand flash writing. And to understand that, you need to understand what's called the spy bar, spy, base address registers, memory mapped I.O. So some information about where some particular memory mapped I.O. registers exist. 
Well, to understand that, you have to understand things like PCIe, LPC controller, configuration address space, and also potentially the DRAM controller or SPI controller config address space. To understand those, you need to understand chipsets and memory mapped I.O. You also have to understand, of course, things like PCI configuration address space. But while we're there on that topic, we may as well learn about another different type of attack, PCI option ROM attacks. And then furthermore, you have to learn about things like port IO, memory mapped IO to really understand how PCI config address space is accessed and how the system sets up the overall memory map. So all of this information is necessary to make our way to the flash write protection and the attacks thereupon. But we also in this class want to learn about system management mode write protection and the attacks on that, which requires us learning about things like system management RAM, which also requires the knowledge of the memory mapped configuration, and it requires us to learn about system management mode itself. And then after you learn all of that stuff and all of those different write protection things and all the different attacks, then we also have to learn about ACPI S3, which is typically referred to as sleep. It's a lower, lower power state of the processor and how that can actually undercut the defenses against these attacks. So you've got some write protection mechanisms, you've got some attacks against them, you've got some countermeasures, defenses against the attacks, but then things like ACPI, S3, sleep can come along and cause even further attacks. So that's what we're gonna be covering in this class. It's a whole lot of information, that's why I made this nice little map. You should think of it like when you're playing a video game and there's, you know, the fog of war, something like Starcraft, Warcraft, Diablo, whatever, you've got the fog of war, it's all, you know, black space and you don't know exactly, you know, what's where and anything like that. Well, I'm going to guide you through this particular path in order to understand this particular information. But we're really just, you know, skimming by cities and villages. And I expect you to go back after class and go get to know the locals, go read the fun manual and understand this information better.